Hey guys, it's Allie from Young, Dumb and Sober. Obviously, you know that by now because you're watching this video and it's on the Young, Dumb, Sober channel and Abel's not next to me. Now that we have gotten the obvious out of the way, let's get right down to what this video is about. So I'm a huge fan of the show Big Mouth. If you guys have not heard of Big Mouth, it's basically an animated TV show made by some of the funniest people in, in the entertainment industry about a group of kids who are going through puberty. It's super raunchy, it's super smart, very clever, some really like dark humor, but also just like really silly stuff as well. I'm a big fan of it. I've loved the show ever since it first came out. It's on its third season, I believe, and it's on Netflix. It's very difficult for a TV show to secure me as a fan. I'm not saying I'm a TV snob, but okay, yeah, that's, exactly what I'm saying. I'm definitely a TV snob. Based on my being a TV snob, do you guys think you can pick my favorite one out of these options? Let's see. If you guys haven't watched Big Mouth, go watch it. This particular episode called Asses is episode nine of season three. You might be thinking to yourself, what the fuck does this have to do with sobriety? What does an animated show about adolescents going through puberty have to do with sobriety? You guys should know better at this point that me and Abel can twist anything to be about sobriety because it is constantly weaved through the fabric of our lives. It's always running in the background. It's kind of difficult to not do that, especially when a theme of like drug use or alcohol use or sobriety comes up, uh, which is the case for, for this particular video and for this particular episode about the asses, which is a standardized test that the um, kids have to take, deals with the use of Adderall. Not to mention just like the humor for Big Mouth is high key dumb, high key young. Hey, that's like two thirds of what we're doing here, right? There is my very long explanation. So in the episode, they're taking a standardized test. One of the kids, Jay, who is kind of like the token like troubled kid, he kind of like gets into a lot of trouble, is just super out there. Um, he gets prescribed Adderall. Jay shows that he's a very disorganized student to one of his best friend's parents, decide to take him to a doctor, at which point Jay describes the doctor a typical morning for him at school. Like what he describes is, you can see it here. Well, first I'm always super late to homeroom. Then I pick at my skin until it bleeds, at which point I start drumming relentlessly. Once Miss Benitez kicks me out, that's around when I quote, lose time. <sighs> Textbook ADHD can totally relate to it. Granted, Jay absolutely needs the Adderall. It also goes to show just like, how easy doctors want to throw pills at us, especially like controlled substances. It is very easy, or it was very easy two and a half years ago to secure a bottle of, of Ritalin or Adderall or any other study drug. I was a big Vyvanse person. That's part of the other reason why I wanted to do this review and speak on this because I've always felt a little bit weird and get kind of vulnerable when it comes to talking about my use of stimulants. Even now that I'm in recovery, I think part of it is that the use of things like Vyvanse and Adderall and study drugs are so normalized in our culture at this point, almost to the point of alcohol really, that you can almost come off as lame for calling out the fact that they can have very negative and serious effects on the people who take them, especially if you don't need them, or even if you do need them, but you have an issue and you overtake them, this guy. So I've stayed silent on this topic for a little while. But after watching the Big Mouth episode, I, I don't know, I got kind of like motivated to speak on it and just kind of want to like go through my own story with it. And obviously, spoilers. So, you know, you don't want to know what happens, like just get out of this video. All of the kids are super stressed about the test. Jake, who actually needs them, gets prescribed Adderall. It works for him. He's able to take the test. He's able to actually sit calmly. He's able to act like um, a normal human being, basically, in society and a decent student for, for once in his life. Meanwhile, he starts 
selling the Adderall to his friends. And then what? It's my money? Jay's money? Yeah, I want to give you money in exchange for what you have. Wow. Am I a boy or a store? That is something that I think is really big in Adderall culture and stimulant culture. Selling it to other people. I personally started taking Vyvanse. I don't want to say on the streets. I got it from somebody who was not a doctor. They weren't a drug dealer either. They were my girlfriend. It was my girlfriend at the time. The point is, is that I wasn't prescribed these. And I think a lot of people who take Adderall and Vyvanse and Ritalin and all that shit aren't prescribed them. You know, it can perpetuate that idea that it is a very normal thing to do. You know, and like not much worse than like drinking a couple of cups of coffee or like an energy drink or whatever else it may be. Eventually I did get my own prescription. One of the things I really like about this episode is that any of the kids who are on Adderall, their like pupils immediately dilate. I, I guess it's, it's confirming the fact that they're on something. And that should be obvious that yes, the whole point is that they're taking drugs, like they're on something. For me, there's still that internalization that that's not really a drug. Like Adderall is not really that bad. That same societal perception that I fear people judging me for, for talking about this stuff is the same one that I hold. That I'm just kind of like, it's not really a big deal. When in reality, it can be, you know, it can be in, in certain circumstances. And at the end of the day, it is still taking a controlled substance, risking the possibility of, of dependence on a stimulant. When I start to do that, when I start to diminish the, the effects that like Adderall or Vyvanse can have on people or how it can truly be an issue for people with addictive personalities or with substance abuse issues such as myself, I like to remind myself of the parallel to, to like heroin and opiates. I feel like oxys are to heroin what like Adderall is to meth. It's, it's not a direct line there and it doesn't necessarily have to leave there. Throughout my time in recovery, I have met several people who told me that they actually started off taking study drugs, eventually moved on to harder stimulants like crack and meth. I mean, I feel like everybody does coke every once in a while. So like, that's not as serious. That's the problem. That's what I fucking do. No, coke is serious too. I don't know how easy it is to get drugs anymore from doctors because I haven't lied to a doctor in like a pretty long time. <laughs> Jay's response to being on Adderall is this. Good morning, jerks. Jay, you're in your seat. Yeah. And you remembered number two pencils? All of a sudden, I'm like horny for following instructions. That's so true. It's like everything is super interesting, even if it's not the most interesting thing in the world when you're when you're high on Adderall or Vyvanse or when you're really high on any stimulant, at least for me. I have trouble shutting up now. Just imagine what I was like on 100 plus milligrams of Vyvanse, plus coffee, and plus Red Bull. <laughs> it was not pretty. Thank God I didn't have a YouTube channel at that point. I'd probably be fucking banned, honestly. So when the other kids start taking the Adderall, um, they don't have the same, it doesn't have the same effect on them as it does on Jay because they don't have ADD or ADHD. So they get the, what I would consider the negative effects of Adderall and what many people might experience as a result of taking study drugs when they don't actually have a legitimate um, issue. For me, it's a little bit different. I have been formally diagnosed. However, I still abused the stimulants to the point of me not being able to take them for the amount that they did help me, if that makes any sense. So if I would have been able to take them at a normal rate, then they would have been very useful in my life. And honestly, I still think to this day that I would not have made it through college had I not had five hands. I wouldn't have gotten my bachelor's degree. I did get my master's degree completely sober. I'm fucking sweating. But again, like I took it too far because that's what I do when it comes to um, drugs and alcohol. Some of the effects that the, the drugs had on the kids, they were super aggressive. Nick got super aggressive to the point where when Andrew tries to take it from him, they get into a verbal disagreement where they're kind of like threatening each other. Give me that pill. No, I need it. Give me that. You try to take it, I will cave your head Fuck in. Fuck you, man. I'll kill you. Give me that pill. So there's that irritability, that anger. I felt that a lot. Jesse, who also takes it, who is uh, susceptible to depression, which is uh, persona by this huge purple cat. <sighs> Why don't you just give up? Get out of here, depression kitty. I need to concentrate. On what? 
How you'll never live up to your mother's expectations. Let me get back to my task. It's really, really interesting because her depression immediately dissipates when she takes it. Keep moving, Glazer! Send it in for Capricious! Mercurial! Fickle! Volatile! Get out of here, you shitty kid! Oh, yeah, vanish! Evacuate! Fuck off! Vivance or Adderall, it creates a sense of euphoria. It creates a false sense of euphoria, which is part of the reason I loved it so much. I'm prone to depression. Having something that lifts me up, I was never a downer girl. Drinking and taking Xanax and things like that tends to push me down even lower to a point of worse depression, you know, almost like paralyzing depression. Whereas uppers give me this really nice euphoric sense that I'm not used to and that I need to chase that I want to get from, you know, outside of myself, that I can't create on my own, or at least at that point in life. So it does get rid of Jessie's depression temporarily, but after she takes the test and she's all like happy about it and great, she's going to bed later on and she can't get to sleep. Please, this was great for taking the test, but now I need to go to sleep. My mind feels insane. Now crank up that anxiety now, because we're gonna start fixating on what broke up the parents' marriage in three, two, one. And this happened to me all the time too. She can't sleep because the Adderall is still in her system. Her mind is still racing. Her body's tired. She wants to go to bed. She can't because the stimulants are still coursing through her. That's when I would subject myself to taking benzos or drinking. I felt like I had no other choice. A vicious cycle for me. Like stimulants, as soon as I woke up in the morning, probably around like 5 or 6 a.m., that lasted until the end of the night. Sometimes I would take Xanax throughout the day in order to just level out even though i was still drinking coffee to like bring myself back up and smoking like packs of cigarettes to bring myself back up by the end of the night there was no way that i was getting to sleep on my own the anxiety was so bad and then there's you know sometimes a crash jesse's depression comes back full force she has a super bad experience so when jay tries to sell her another pill jesse says no. Give your brain a boner! Hey, Jesse, you look stupid. Want one? No, I am not doing that shit ever again. I like that that happened because it reminds me that I had several negative experiences similar to what she experienced by taking whatever stimulant it was, but I still always said yes to it. I still sought it out. That I think is one of the key signs of addiction or substance abuse problem that despite the negative consequences that the use of a drug or a drink can bring you, even if you know it makes you feel like shit, you will still choose to continue to do it over and over again. For me, I see it as, in retrospect, it's kind of like any feeling is better than feeling what I'm feeling sober. You know, anything is preferable to being alone with myself. I'd rather be in a place of heightened anxiety, paranoia, literally hearing voices. I kid you not, I was diagnosed with drug-induced schizophrenia for a short amount of time than having to look at myself or be still, meditate, God forbid, or like connect with anything spiritually. It just really kind of like brought that back into focus for me. Missy, the smartest student in like the whole school, ends up taking it too, and she just becomes like a, like a fucking tweaker on it as well. <laughs> Mm. Missy, mm. are you okay? I think so, maybe. I don't know. I'm very aware of my scalp. Can you feel every one of your hairs individually? Which is totally relevant for me too. I've definitely felt that way on it where I feel like I can see sound and hear color. It is jarring. But after you do it for so long, it actually feels like the new normal. I was taking Vyvanse, a very, very high dose of it, for like three or four years, almost every single day. And it was really hard to get off of because I kept telling myself that I needed it. You know, that actually turned out not to be true. I've gone through, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff without the use of, of stimulants. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at with it. I just really liked the episode. I thought it was super funny. And on top of that, it's, it's relevant to like what's going on today in our society. Definitely think that you guys should go watch it. It's hilarious. If you have any experiences with Adderall or Vyvanse or any kind of stimulant or study drug, drop your experience in the comments below. Like, I'd love to hear other people's opinions on it. I know that it can be a topic of contention. That's all for me. To close it out, I would say that I still struggle with having cravings for stimulants. I still very much crave the, the euphoric response my brain and my body has to taking stimulants i still very much <laughs> abuse stimulants in and i would say you know lesser ways like energy drinks and coffee and um, like ginseng things like that however i feel much freer now that i 
don't have to run my day or schedule my day around taking a pill and then schedule my eating and my food around it because I can't eat and then having to maintain it throughout the day and then having to try and taper myself off it at night. It was a full-time job being active and that's especially true when it came to Vyvanse for me. So despite any good feelings that it gave me, there was definitely more negative than there was positive. And the thought of going back on that now actually just kind of scares the shit out of me because I don't ever want to get like that close to insanity ever again. Zero out of 10, would not recommend. I think I'll stay sober for today at least. So thanks guys for watching. Like I said, comment below, share, like, do whatever else you gotta do. It's been real, it's been fun, and it's been real fun. Bye. Yeah,